Hello, and welcome to the Sunday meditation at the Light Institute of Gunnisdale and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide this meditation into three parts. In the first part, we connect with our higher self. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice. So we ask it to take a form, we draw it into our body so that we can sit in meditation uh, with our higher self. And then I'll make a little om sound, and you can push the button on your apparatus so you can meditate for as long as you like. The second part of the meditation is where we reach up into the cosmos and we pull down a beam of pure white light down through the top of our head and down into our solar plexus, and from there we laser it out from us, stretching out our, our energy, our presence, across our planet, back up into the sky. And this med part of the meditation is only about the breath. We breathe in, and we pull that white light down through into our solar plexus, the center of our emotional body. We exhale, very long and slow, because that takes you into a deep meditative state. Extending out across and back into the sky. And that's the only thing we do in that second part, and it does bring us into a lovely meditative state. Another um. And the third part, each week we pick a situation or some theme that we want to send the vibration that we've accrued in our meditation out into the world. And this week, here in the United States, this is what's called Memorial Day. And Memorial Day is about honoring all the military beings uh, who have died uh, in wars, died for the service of their country. I know that every country has their own um, day like this. And so as we do it, we will ask all those who have died in wars way back to the beginning of time, or the ones that are dying now, what frequency of light, what color they need from us to feel the honoring and be released up into the light. Because when people die uh, in violence, they often, their spirits are stuck uh, in the astral. So we want to just give them a sense of uh, being honored, even if uh, we don't feel, I certainly know that war is, a, is an old conversation, it doesn't belong in our reality. But those who gave up their lives, we will always honor uh, their choice, because in so doing, they have perhaps even inadvertently given us an opportunity to consider uh, about wars, about dying in these ways, that perhaps we are ready to change. Let's begin with a couple of breaths. Close your eyes. Breathe in through your nose. Hold at the top. And exhale very slowly through your mouth. And once again, breathe in through your nose. Hold. And exhale through your mouth. Ask your higher self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, to take a form for you. It doesn't matter what form it is. It could be a horizon, a star, a being, a tree, an animal, an equation. Whatever comes to you, higher self, take form and see what form appears at this moment. And now ask your body where it holds your divine essence at this moment, any place in your body. Breathe in and out through that place, wherever you imagined it. Just breathing in and out, opening in that spot of divine source, and draw your higher self into your body through that place, and sit in meditation.
as your own higher self. Om. Lift your consciousness up into the cosmos and pull down, magnetize to you a beam of pure white light down to the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, your stomach. And as you exhale, laser that white light out across our planet, back into the sky. And as you breathe in, draw it down, exhale, laser it out. Just continue that breathing. Bring into your mind's eye all of those from around the world, from now and in the past, who have died in the service of their countries, who have died in wars, perhaps even this. And well, Memorial Day is about them, the warriors or the, the military, so we'll focus on them, males and females. Imagine that you're bringing them all into a group in your mind's eye. And now ask them what color they need from you to receive the honoring that they died for whatever cause they felt was true for them, that they gave their lives for something, and that they can now let go of any guilt or shame and lift up into higher octaves of light. Do it now. What color do they need? And as we did before, Reach up into the cosmos and pull that beam of light down through the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, and laser that color out through you and out to all of those military beings that gave their lives from the dawn of time. And just continue that color flowing down through you and out to them until you can feel a shift, a quickening, a lightening up, a releasing, sending the color, drawing it in, lasering it out. for that meditation. I know it'll be a gift. There is a second part to our meditation. It's called Knowings. And people from around the world every week send in questions that they would like for us to focus upon in order to uplift us or illuminate our lives for everyone who's participating. And Allison will tell us the questions that have come this week. Allison? The first question is from Los, Al no. <laughs> Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. California <laughs> How do we avoid taking on the stuff of other people when we have to work with them professionally? Mm. You know, it's true that we spend more time with our colleagues or people we're working on professionally than we do with the ones we love at home. And so they're the ones uh, which my higher self would call perhaps honorable opponents that push us into uh, finding how we need to change our perspectives. If you have someone that you work with professionally and they are very difficult, they will not change unless you remove them from that point of how you're holding them into a different one. So the first thing that I would say is begin to look for the qualities that you, that you like in them and communicate those qualities. I like the way you do this. Uh, you are really brilliant about that. The more that you can uh, give an energy that's supporting, the more you'll receive that back. But not because you'll receive it back, but because you will get up into a place where you're not 
I'm doing this. They did that to me and I don't like them. And that will always uh, be an, an ongoing conversation. So you actually want to come to a professional place and, and, and know that <laughs> they are gifting you. What is the gift we say of the Light Institute? To illuminate or to grow um, and to look at something that might need to be cleared in you when we clear it in us. For example, if you s feel that they are um, mysterious or sneaky, ask your body where you hold that energy and release it from you. Uh, so that you get above that, you clear that from you, so you don't have to have it in your environment and you can spend your life uh, with those that you truly love. And then the second part of that is how can you love them better, so to speak. And one of the ways that you do that is to extend energy to them. So whenever you're going to call someone on the phone and you want to have a, a, a productive conversation, Send them light, as we just did. What color do you need from me to be in balance in my life? And then, even if you're talking to them in your mind's eye, never out loud, you just draw in from the cosmos, never from you, and send them light. You'll realize that the more you do that, the less you are waiting for them to do something that you don't approve of or, or uh, become a problem in your life. I think that it's very important to, to see that they they're there to illuminate uh, growth for you, but you want to bring that energy down so that you're not giving them your whole conversation. So often people come home and they're still working out what happened at work, and then they work it out on their beloveds. And so we want to not give those professionals, colleagues, that much power over you. You want to turn your attention to what really matters in your life, and those are the ones that are, that are close to you, that you will grow and sleep and laugh and play and, and, and be together through thick and thin, we say. Yes. Allison. The second question is from Sion, Switzerland. Switzerland? Mm -hmm. Hello. Will you please discuss how our grief affects others? Mm -hmm. What is our responsibility to those around us, including our pets? Do we owe it to those who depend on us to be strong, to lift up, and put on a brave face to help them through the catastrophe? I have not been able to be strong since the untimely death of my husband, mm -hmm. and I know this is quietly, insidiously, adversely affecting my family and even my dogs. I just don't have it in me to lift out of my grief. It feels selfish, but there it is. Chris, your advice would be greatly welcomed. Dear one, it is not selfish. Uh, when you have a partner, like a husband, uh, a year and you've been years together, your auric fields are connected. It, it takes a while for you to come back to your own auric field without his being a part of that or hers being part of his being a part of that. Uh, and so uh, don't think that you are selfish to do that. Yes. Um, your family will definitely be experiencing with you, but not uh, that you owe them something. You owe no one anything. Your grief is yours to last as long as you, you need it to last. And what I would say about that is to remember that we grieve because it, uh, half of us, a part of us, has gone away. Death does not really separate you. Uh, you will always have that love and that energy and you can use that to love again, or to go on in your life. And it's very important to begin to uh, uh, converse with yourself. How shall I live my life? What will bring me joy? So part of releasing grief is to go ahead and begin to rebuild, reinvent yourself, rebuild your life. This is important. Your husband would not want you to grieve forever. You grieve mostly for you, and you have that right. Uh, there may always be that empty space there, but you can begin to fill around it and through it with your own life, because you are here. This world needs you, and it needs you to be at peace with yourself. Your family uh, may be affected by it, uh, and I would say the best way through that is to communicate.
communicate to them, to say to them, I'm grieving. Wherein you allow them to help you, to say, we grieve with you, or we're so sorry, or, or uh, let us, let's go out to eat, or let's, let's do something as well about you. Allow them to be a part of this story. The more that you convey what you feel, the closer you will get. The one thing that does happen with death is that it can bring families close together uh, in ways that you have always been strong or, or not communicated or told your family what is true. The best thing that you could do is to say what's in your heart and what you feel. And they will show you how, why they're your family. They will support you. Yes, your dog your animals will feel your sorrow. And it's very important to talk to them. Uh, they understand you, in, not only in language, but in gestures, to say, it's okay. And the more that you put attention to them, take them for walks, do things that uh, allow them to make you laugh or to comfort you, the better it will be. Again, you do not need to feel responsible for anyone else's reaction. You don't know. It may be that your dog is not just feeling your grief, but has grief of its own. Uh, and it will release that in tandem with you. So please know that this is all a part of learning about the preciousness of life and how death is not an ending, but that it is something that your husband's soul chose. Not in his consciousness, not in his there's awareness in his body, but on a soul level, he went home. And you want to honor that and continue with your life. And to begin to look at how can you use being here? What, what, what purpose do you have? It might be smiling with others. It might be talking with others about grief. Now, the more that we communicate who we are, the more we heal our world. It's when we close up and hide that we uh, do not help the possible uh, future that awaits us. I send you my support and my great love. Allison? The last question is from Rus Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Chris Griscom, I just finished reading your Ecstasy as a New Frequency <laughs> book, and I'm fascinated by your work, but I'm terrified at what negative possessive energies I might be carrying around that I've absorbed during my life that are creating negativity in me. How do we stop these energies from entering into us? <laughs> Let me console you first to tell you that everyone on this planet, including and especially all the spirits that are hovering around, <laughs> uh, even the great ones um, from time, have possessions. A possession can be a negative thought form or even a part of a thought form as much as some kind of heavy energy that is occurring that's moving into the astral which is in simultaneous space with us. So the way we always get rid of negativity is to rise above it, is to make it smaller. And the way you make it smaller, first of all, is to re release your fear of it um, and know that the best way to remove a negative energy, a possessive negative energy, first of all, is to become conscious. To listen to yourself when suddenly your emotional mind is attacking someone else or attacking you, um, that's a very possessive energy. You see, the more that we succumb to negative frequencies, whether they're outside us or inside us, the more we create through that, that negativity that we have inside or bring inside us a biochemical reaction and our body becomes addicted just like it can become addicted to cigarettes or alcohol or candy or anything else. It wants you to um, allow that negativity so that it can have that little jolt. So the way you do that is that you begin first of all to acknowledge it uh, you can say, where am I holding any possessive negative energy right now? And, and you might hear my heart, my fingertips, anywhere. Bring your conscious awareness there. What color does it need to be released? The moment that you choose light, everything is made of light, you have already diminished uh, the power of any negativity within you. And then the second part of that, which is the way we work here at the Light Institute, is to... Uh, 
begin to fill your body with light, to quicken your frequency. I use essential oils because they're electric and they lift, they lift the energy. Spinning around, as is probably written in that book, Ecstasy, spinning around to the right. When you spin, it will, like centrifugal force, spin out negativity from you. And then, again, where am I holding, as we did before, my higher self? Have your higher self take form, give you a gift, touch your body. Or where am I holding the energy of light? Because, again, negativity, um, if it comes towards light, people always used to say, well, if you try to be a light being, you'll just attract neg negativity. But they miss something there. When negativity is attracted to light, it becomes light. Light and darkness intertwine with each other in this ever-flowing evolution of all that is. And so, <laughs> if, if negativity comes forward, you amplify your light, and the, and the negativity actually, according to, to cosmic law, only has two choices. It can transform into light, become the light, or it has to retract, because it can't stand the light, and it has to move out and away. And the, the last thing I would say to you is, again, um, you want to begin to be aware of any negativity through your own thoughts or your own emotions that are there, and simply look at those as something that you have the power to release, because you do. We are wonderful light beings, all of us, and that's why we're here. So don't be afraid. Bring in the light and, and shine that. And you'll be amazed at how your life begins to reflect back to you higher, happier, more cosmic, expansive energies and purposes. Great love to you and to all of you.